Grace to you, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. From this morning's Gospel reading from John chapter 1. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So far, God's word to us this morning. Last week, we observed the baptism of our Lord Sunday, where Jesus came to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. It was John who had seen the Spirit come upon Jesus as a dove, John who had heard God speak, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus, the promised Savior, who stood in line with sinners not out of repentance, but in solidarity with them as the one who would fulfill all righteousness. As the hymn writer pins his words, the Savior came to be baptized, the Son of God in flesh disguised, to stand beneath the Father's will and all his righteousness fulfill. And as he walks by, John points to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A few words, but full of meaning for us sinful children of men. Whenever a lamb is mentioned in the Bible, it's generally in the context of a sacrifice. As Abraham and Isaac reached Mount Moriah, where God had sent them to make sacrifice, sacrifice the boy looks to his father and he says, Behold the fire, the wood, where's the lamb for a burnt offering? To which Abraham responds, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. As God prepared Israel to be rescued out of their Egyptian bondage, he instructed Moses to have every household take a lamb without blemish, a male, a year old, to kill and eat, and to paint the blood on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses, so that the angel of death would pass over their families. And as they were making their way to the promised land, God instructed the high priest to offer on the altar two lambs a year old regularly. One lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. It was a lamb that was supposed to be sacrificed for the burnt offering, a lamb that was sacrificed as a peace offering, a lamb that was sacrificed as a sin offering. And that sin offering had a specific ritual as the sinner would place his hands on the animal, confess his sins, for which the lamb was then slaughtered as the substitute for those sins. The Bible notes that the wages of sin is death, and so the animal was put to death in place of the sinner. Religiously and culturally, blood has been the symbol of life, and the shedding of blood the symbol of offering one's own life. It was a lamb that bore the burden of the sinner. Now twice in today's gospel reading, John points to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and behold the Lamb of God. John is pointing to Jesus as the one who would fulfill Isaiah's prophecy like a lamb that is led to a slaughter, and like a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Jesus is identified specifically as the Lamb of God, the once for all ultimate sacrifice for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. Luther once preached that if Christ bears the sin of the world, he is evidently a sinner. Nay, he alone is a sinner. For the Holy Spirit does not jest when he, through the prophet, says, the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all, and through John, behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Just as the sinner would lay his hands on the Lamb to be sacrificed, to transfer his sin, so God lays on his one and only Son the sins of the world. St. Peter tells us that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. As the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus takes our place under God's law. Jesus substitutes himself in our stead under the law's righteous condemnation. Jesus approaches the altar of God's judgment seat and relinquishes his life for the forgiveness of our sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through the promised Messiah who comes as the Lamb of God, he was sent to Judea. He came for the sake, though, of the whole world. And that's the point the prophet makes in today's Old Testament reading when he says, God says, it's too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Jesus substitutes himself for all humankind, even as the Bible teaches us. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, but not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. And again, we take note that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting man's sins against them. As a sacrificial lamb, Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our salvation. Because the Lord and Savior of mankind took our place, assumed our sins as his own, we do not stand before God's judgment seat condemned. We stand before the holy God as his forgiven children. We are declared to be innocent even as Paul tells Titus, Jesus Christ gave himself up for us all to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do good works. And as Jesus walked by, John continued talking to those who were with him. He said, I saw the Spirit from heaven like a dove descend, and it remained on him. Now I myself did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen, and I have borne witness, that this is the Son of God. John is testifying to those who have been following him. He points them to see Jesus as the Christ. He continually presses what he knows to be true. And then the next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Why? Why does John continue to point to Jesus as the Lamb of God? Well, John is telling people that the Lamb who will finally and totally atone for their sins is Jesus. Continuing to lay your hands on sacrificial lambs will not result in a once-for-all redemption. Having Jesus take up our sins, however, will. The writer to the Hebrews describes Christ taking our place in his sacrifice and why it is so important in chapter 2 where he writes, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who have all their lives been held in slavery by their fear of death. For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a faithful and merciful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Jesus takes the place of the sacrificial lambs to become the Lamb of God, who substitutes himself for the sinful children of men and for the sake of their salvation. And so how does one respond to this Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Well, we pick up our gospel reading at verse 27. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. 
Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, um, where are you staying? And so they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it is about the tenth hour. Now, one of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought him to Jesus. Hearing what John had said about Jesus, Andrew and the unnamed disciple of the Baptist checked him out. And after they had spent some time with him, they came to the conclusion that he was the Christ. And then they told others. That is why that in our faith we look to a future fixed on Jesus, of whom the evangelist sees in his vision, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. We look to him in faith and we point others to him for the sake of their hope and their salvation. Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world as our substitute and as the sacrifice that makes right the sinful children of men. To him we come. On him we lay our sins so that he might rescue us from the grip of sin, death, and hell. And daily we offer up a prayer much like that which we just sang Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross did suffer, ever patient and lowly thyself to scorn didst offer all sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned over us. Have mercy, O Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds unto Christ and unto life everlasting.